What is your most memorable catering event since you started the company with your husband? Or maybe like top two. I'm sure you've done some amazing ones. We've done some really cool ones, but probably my favorite was the Breaking Bad finale. Diego mentioned that, that you yeah. did that. Yeah. I don't know if you saw the show oh, or you watched my, it. Yeah, my, every single episode. I'm not a, we don't have a television, as you may have seen. But Breaking Bad uh, goes down as like my favorite television yeah. show. I read Brian Cranston's book time. that he wrote. He yeah, what was the event from like? So, Middle, you know? so, what, so it was like the event in LA. Was there a theme? Yeah, it was Breaking Bad, and um, Aaron Paul drove the Winnebago. To, Stop. Yeah, it was at Hollywood Forever, the graveyard. Oh my gosh! And he That's perfect he drove it to the graveyard, and then they had a screening of the final episode, and then we had 900 people uh, in the Masonic Lodge and like beautiful, beautiful. DJ, oh my god! What an event! What did you serve? So how did you serve meth? No. <laughs> This is Startup to Storefront, the podcast where we talk to business owners and entrepreneurs about the untold challenges of scaling a business. Welcome to the podcast. We have the ICA Caterer of the Year winner for 2019, featured in On the Today Show and in Vogue and in LA Weekly. A legendary caterer here in the LA scene, Kathleen Schaefer. Welcome to Startup to Storefront. Thank you. Thanks for coming on. How did you first get into food? Were you, were you a child, really into it, helping grandma? What was the... You know, uh, my mother entertained a lot, and um, she kind of, she still is a really good cook, and um, so there was always an interest in food, and then um, I went to NYU. I worked in restaurants in high school, and I went to NYU and studied fine arts. And, and you, you grew up in, on the East Coast, too? I did, outside okay. of Philadelphia. And then, you know, just continued working in restaurants in New York City and, you know, quickly realized I wasn't going to have a career in art or art history. Um, so, you know, just just uh, kept kind of working my way up in the industry. And then I was in Tribeca and I did that for a few years. And, you know, things uh, grew and I got press and was written up in the New York Times and Black Book Magazine at the time and several kind of fashion a, magazines. A niche. Yeah. yeah. And so then I got like, I was catering for the Conan O'Brien show and Saturday Night Live. And, you know, so it's amazing. The business grew that way. And then, you know, got kind of tired of that, wasn't really happy, you know, and, and realized, like, I needed to do something else with my life, so I started private chefing. I'm sorry, that's not true. I wasn't a private chef. I took an executive chef position with Michael Bloomberg's private club, and he was so funny. The first day I started, he walked into the office, and he said, oh, we're so happy to have you here, and, and he was talking to me, and the golf pro, and the, the controller, and the GM are all standing around, and he goes, I'm really glad you got the job, don't fuck it up. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> what a confidence. Yeah. Yeah. He was shocked. He was running yeah. for mayor at the time. I feel like I'm on the cliff of when you came to L.A., oh, but okay. there's so many other so, yeah. stops. So my husband and I met... Yeah, um, we were both hired guns for an event company in New York. Um, so you met on the job. We met on the job, cool. and we were catering the um, 2004 Republican National Convention at Madison Square Garden. Well, at least it wasn't the 2016 one. Yeah. Well, <laughs> we, we say we were the only good thing to come out of that convention. Mm -hmm. How many so, people yeah. are you catering for that? So, again, with Michael Bloomberg, I was hired to handle his suite okay. and Giuliani's suite. So I had about 30 people that I was responsible for feeding, and I had a whole team working for me. And Charlie, my husband, had the entire senatorial delegation. So <laughs> he had about 800 people to feed. So I would help him. Sure. Because I didn't have anything to And were you dating at the time? Or no, not that's yet. how I met him. Okay. And so I went and I was like, I'll help him. He's cute. <laughs> yeah. And then we started dating and we moved to Los Angeles on a whim without jobs. Nice. What brought you to, how did you pick? We just had like one of those kind of perfect, iconic Southern California weekends where everything was fun and everywhere we went was amazing and fun. 
and the weather was great, and for whatever reason, there was no traffic, so I had no idea wow. what it was really yeah. like to live here. During the week. <laughs> yeah. And so I got back to New York, and I said to Charlie, like, you know, I, I want to move out there. I think we should move out there. And he, he was like, I will never live in Los Angeles. Wow. Bold yeah. statement. Yeah. And then he came with me, and he was like, okay, we're going back. We're packing up, and we're just moving here because he loved it, too. Moving across the country with your significant other is like... A, you know, binding experience, you know, you're sure. both like leaving your homes, like leaving your whole family. We similar story, <laughs> oddly enough. Yeah. I mean, we started in Boston. That's we, where we met. We bought a, then, an investment property in South Boston. Uh, it's called Southie for short. It's like where Whitey Bulger yeah. had oh, rained. What a, what a rained. claim to fame. <laughs> All the beautiful things you could well, have no, said. I, I think it's funny because Whitey you had said Bulger. that your husband said he would never move to LA. Yeah. And when Diego and I were looking for another place in Boston, uh, he had said, I will never move to Southie. And I found, uh, I found this little tiny 600 square foot condo uh, apart apartment in Southie. And it was 14 foot high ceilings and gorgeous. It was a cool loft. A really cool loft. And we had, you know, he, I said, look, this is, this is the place. This it's right behind the seaport. This is the answer to your question. It's right behind the seaport. But we're getting there. We ended up selling it when, um, uh, so we started a tech GM company moved. and then we but. ended up getting, um, accepted into a program in San Francisco. But Mountain here's View. where I'm going with this though. Also. Okay. So we had just bought this place and we had gotten married, uh, maybe three months, two or three months after. And he got into, they got into this program, which is extremely sought after in Silicon Valley. And he was supposed to only be there three months. And then it turned out all the investors were there. They wanted to grow the company in the Bay Area. So I called him and I said, all right, um, are we doing this? Are we moving? Are we moving to San Francisco? And uh, he's like, yep. Okay. Yeah. We're, we we got to do this. Very, you know, in the midst of it all, stressed out. So, okay, I'm going to quit my job, find a new job out there and rent our, uh, you know, our place out. And I guess we're doing this. So we moved and, you know, we only knew the people in the startup. And I had one friend that had recently moved to San Francisco from that I knew in college. So I was I'm totally different, obviously, being there first, being in Boston. And our whole families are in Boston and in, on the East Coast. Right. So we, it was that resonates with me because yeah. it's such a big move. <laughs> but then, so yeah. then it's like year three of the startup and Natalia is looking for a place to, to flip. Because we kind of got the real estate itch again. Mm -hmm. And she was looking all over the country. Everywhere. And, like literally everywhere. And we ended up, or she ended up finding this. And I'm way too busy with tech at this point. Like I'm working kind of like similar to you where it's just full on. Um, do or die. Do yeah. or die, yeah. yeah. And so she ends up finding a place in the Hollywood Hills here a in hunting LA. cabin with was, wood paneling. It was cheap. It was like very cheap. It's like 600000 which is super cheap. Um in that area yeah and so, less than a thousand square feet yeah. yep exactly yeah. mm -hmm. and so she ended up getting it and i'm pretty much not involved at all i'm like yeah sure send the money whatever and i'm like i'm just trusting that you've done the math and everything it works out so and i was driving down like every week to manage the cruise yeah, from San Francisco to manage the crews and building this out and getting oh, all the wow. permits and everything. That's yeah, pretty crazy. We gutted yeah. the entire thing. Brought she had no water. All new utilities. I was sleeping in a in a like bedroom that had its own entrance, so I could lock it and lock all my stuff in there. Oh. And like the rest of the house was just like all the framing and not no fixtures, no water, no electricity. And uh, I would <laughs> he, he calls me the bougiest entrepreneur because I would shower at Equinox every morning. <laughs> So Equinox, for those of you who don't know, is like the nicest gym in the world. In West Hollywood? And yeah. in West Hollywood. On Sunset Boulevard. Full of celebrities. Yeah. yeah. So Natalia is going there to shower and sometimes work out, but mostly to mostly shower. Mostly to brush shower every day and brush my teeth. So and then for dinner, bag. she's going to Nora, which is a wonderful restaurant. In Santa Monica. Uh, Santa Monica. Ave. And so that's... I that's, became a regular there. That's the... Um, I didn't have a kitchen. I couldn't cook anything. And I wasn't trying to like take out every night and, you know... Some of their, See? some of their like broccolini dishes or whatever can just be a meal. <laughs> They're amazing and filling. So yeah. So I was coming down on the week on like some of the weekends, and I really didn't have any understanding of LA at all. I just thought, You're like, cool. You shower at Equinox. Yeah. Los yeah. Angeles. Yeah. Next. And it was like camping up there. Next in the hills. to Dave Navarro. <laughs> right. Yeah. And like and Fabio. Kevin Hart. Fabio. 
he goes there all the time. Oh, yeah, did belong there yeah. he goes he's there all there. the time. Yeah, so in his Porsche. Yeah, and he's like just chatting with everyone. I'm like, do you even work yeah, he's out? Kinda like like, he's kind of like the mascot, chatting Kathy. Yeah, he you talks know, to everybody. He's a nice, don't very nice. Belong there too. Huh. Um, from Rocky. Oh yeah, 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 cool. It's Somebody started coming here on the place. weekends, and I'm like, oh, wow. Kind of similar to your experience, where I was like, I really like it here. Yeah. And I really like the people I was meeting. Everyone had, like, a cool story, or they were doing something so different, right? It wasn't, like, finance or tech. It was right. entertainment. Right. And I just yeah. was like, that's amazing. Tell me about that world, you know? Yeah. It's such a land of opportunity, too, here. I mean, for anyone listening that, you know, has thought about moving to L.A., like, you know, your story about moving here with really no plan and no job... I think is like it's less risky than to move to other cities with no plan or no job because I, every you know everything's just so open and everyone's eager to collaborate and you know give opportunities and exchange you know value that I think it's one of the better cities to do that in. <laughs> so when did you start your business with your husband? So um, I worked for several celebrities as their chef. Um, like personal and, chefs? Yeah. Okay. And so it was a full time, you know, like I traveled. What is that like for someone? For, there's it's nobody, absurd. myself included, nobody knows what that's like. So don't name the celebrity, but. Or do. Or <laughs> up to you. Is it something like um, they have their, I don't know, are they usually on a, a, a quick on diet? A diet? Always on a diet. So there's probably like requests of like this and is are you what making, I want this week or are you talking to the trainer also? Like is it you and a dietitian? Yeah. Or? So you know the one um, actress that I was working for, she was doing the zone diet. I've you know, never you, heard of that. Yeah, you have to like weigh the proteins and and all of the. It's like a lot of work. Yeah. And so you had to like do all that math for her. Yeah, yeah, and then package everything, and and you know, so and that was in her home. And full then, meal for the whole day, every day, right? Yeah. Okay. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Is there a cheat? Like I, I would be the person to ask you for a little cheap gift every day. No. They don't do no, that. She, no, and that's, that's why brutal. she's so incredibly beautiful because she eats like seven blueberries a day, and that's about <laughs> that's the recommended amount of blueberries. Is that, is that, is that all it takes? Wow. <laughs> You know, so I, I just, I was trying not to be judgy, but sure. you know, it's like, okay, it's part of their job their and regiment. they have to maintain their body and their overall appearance is, is part of their work. But at the same time, I, I would love to go home at night and eat whatever I wanted. Yeah. So I was like, that's not my job. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you that's know, pretty and then cool. I, I landed um, a full-time job with an executive and... I stayed with them for three and a half years, oh. and so um, they had a home, you know, in in Calabasas, and one in Malibu, and one in Hawaii, and oh. um, you know they entertained a lot, so that made the work interesting because I wasn't just feeding them and their kids. You know, I got to really sort of show off and do events for them. And then their friends and, and neighbors, also C-level executives, would be like, hey, will you do a party for us? Sure. And so that's how we started our business. What's a budget for a party of, of this type? Of like maybe 30 people. Is it like a small wedding? Is it 25000 yeah. Is it yeah. 50000 I mean, Well, it depends. I mean, I didn't have any budgets. Um, you know, and I Perfect. didn't have to adhere to it. Well, it was kind of great. Yeah, it is great. creative and buy whatever I wanted yeah. um, and whatever ingredient I thought was interesting. Yeah, you know? sure. And then I could also, like, it was, it was very sort of curatorial. You know, I could cure uh, an Iberian ham and prosciutto. And I was like, I'm going to buy a heritage pig. And I bought a heritage pig <laughs> and the primals and cured, you know, an Iberian style ham over two years in their wine cellar. I had like my own room in their wine wow. cellar. Wow. And I got to like. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. And do yeah, that's like really charcuterie cool. and stuff. That so I you just, got to flex your muscles. Yeah. And do some really fun experimental stuff. That's awesome. Um, and, you know, whatever kind of equipment I wanted, I, I could get. Yeah, so that that was good. When did you guys open your location? When did that happen? We this was um, two thousand and seven, 
And we decided, we're like, oh, we're catering all these events and everybody keeps asking when we're gonna open a restaurant. And so we started down the road of uh, trying to do a restaurant. And oh, okay. um, we got really far down the road with a lease in Venice. And Did just, the space have like hoods and everything or would you have had to invest? Yes. Okay. Oh, that's good. So, and it had, um, it, it was grandfathered, so we didn't have to do the grease interceptor or the grease trap. Sure, the grease trap, yeah. So, you know, we, we were like, we were so close, but um, the parking wasn't quite right. And, you know, for full liquor license, it's attached to parking. So we kind of walked away from it in the, in the 11th hour. We were like, ah, it just doesn't feel right. Wow. And then the economy tanked and we were like, thank you, God. Yeah. We didn't if you had done it. So what'd you do all the, during that time? So I was still working as a private chef and then I left those guys and we just, we said, you know, this, there's part of this building that they're willing to, um, bisect the, the landlord and he was going to take the dining room side of the building and rent it out for uh, creative like office space. Okay. And so there was a thousand square foot commercial kitchen and we said, all right, let's just go for it. And we signed the lease on that and opened, uh, events and catering. How many year lease did so, you sign? Well, that was not smart. Uh, we signed a six-year, or, or we signed a 10, okay. but we didn't protect ourselves, which, which we should have. Um, In what way? Um, you know, we, we didn't have um, enough kind of legal advice behind us. We sort of entered into it trusting the landlord and thinking he was, um, you know, helping us in some way. Which, sure. He was not, and you know what? What we should have done is uh, hindsight's twenty twenty, but we really should have made sure that uh, we had options to of, renew. Yeah. Okay. And also that we had first right of refusal sure. to, to purchase the property, and um, that we could transfer or sell the lease. Um, so what did you do differently when you got your next lease? Then you, you did all those things. You did all those things. Yeah. Okay. And got so you a got, lawyer. You got kicked out of the location, it sounds like. Um, no. We were there for six years and the landlord was really crazy and he was parading, you know, potential buyers in and out of our business the building, yeah. while we were working and at this point we had employees and and he was just interrupting our business and and, you know, it was on Lincoln Boulevard and it was just like an encampment of uh, homeless in our parking lot every day. And it was wow. kind of dangerous and, wow. and hard to work there. How so, did you get out of the lease? I don't know. I'm not a creative person. I have no idea. <laughs> you know, um, we, we fulfilled our obligations and I, I don't really know how it all worked out. That's sure. why I have a business partner. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah deals with that nitty gritty yeah but um we did know like going forward when we were looking for new spaces to really lawyer up yeah and have some great representation and and so we we have an awesome real estate attorney who we still work with and he um just negotiated on our behalf but your new space is huge yes so you went yeah. from 1,000 square feet to seven. Oh wow yeah. So yeah. well, while we were looking, and we really wanted to buy something, um, but while while we were in the process of looking, we had a, a temporary commercial kitchen in, in Marina Del Rey, and you you know, like a commercial kitchen is like a unicorn. Yes. You know? So and it's a valuable thing mm -hmm. because you yes. invest so much into it with compliance and equipment mm -hmm. that you should be able to use that as an asset. Mm. Um, yeah, yeah. Commercial kitchens, I think the investment can be anywhere from like three hundred thousand to two million dollars, depending on the size. Yeah, I mean, it's easily. it's a huge investment. Yeah. Yeah. And the health department approval and everything you have to go through. Yeah, it's a nightmare. Uh, well, just you know the plan checks and the building and safety and and all of the <laughs> ADA compliance. All the stuff I deal with. Oh, you sound like a, a pro. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's, it's insane. I'm not. I'm not <laughs> You're kind of forced to be once yeah. you go through that process. Yeah, it's once a crash though. course. It's yeah. Like a crash like master's degree in, in yeah. real estate. Something you never thought. How you many employees to deal with? did you have when you, I guess, moved into your other look, your your 
um, 7,000 square foot location. So we were in Venice for six years and then Marina Del Rey for one year. Um, and again, another crazy kind of sublet situation with a crazy guy who lived in the space illegally. What? And we didn't know until we had moved in. Where did he live? He had a loft built. In so he was like in your working space in the kitchen. <laughs> what? That is so yeah, bizarre. He was like the man under the stairs from David Letterman. Wow. Yeah, it was crazy. What? Like, like the mole people. So and that was not in your contract, right? No. <laughs> the so what did you do? Um, so we just kept shopping around with, with the <laughs> broker. All the while we were still, you know, running our business. Hopefully he wasn't eating the food when you weren't there. Uh, perhaps he was. <laughs> I, I have no idea. Wow. Uh, yeah, but he was just crazy. And then we um, we found the place in Mid City through uh, you know some some professional uh, contacts that we had in the in the business, and a broker approached us, and so uh, we kind of. Uh, took the space and we purchased the FF and E, and we were going to purchase the lease. However, the uh, person that was operating in there did not have a lease with any kind of contingencies or anything. So wow. we went and negotiated our own lease okay. with the building owners and made sure that we got everything we wanted um, and moved in, which as developers, uh, we gutted the place to the studs, we rewired it, we re-plumbed everything. Did you get a big um, allowance? No. Oh, wow. uh, so you had to front all we, of that? Yeah. Wow. However, we did it in 30 days and, and what? moved in. I know. How? With permitting and everything? Well, yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Creatively. <laughs> Creatively. Yeah, we, had, we had a good uh, general contractor and, you know. That makes all the difference. But there, there was so much unpermitted work okay. in that space because the operator was there for 30 years. Sure. There, there was like live electricity oh my God. and some walls. Yeah. I mean, no crazy. Good. Yeah. So you guys brought everything up to code, obviously. Yes. Did it the right way. Yeah. Good. And, um, you know, just tore out so much structure that was inside the space that was not. To open it up. Yeah. And it, and it wasn't to code anything. Was, it was really the whole building was held together with like you know, <laughs> duct tape. <laughs> so, yeah, so Oof. we kind of did that in 30 days and we had two events the, the week we were moving in. We had an 800 person dinner and the next night we had a 500 person sit down wow. dinner and they were still doing like drywall. Wow. Yeah, and we had health inspectors in there. I oh mean, my goodness, that's hectic. Super yeah. crazy. So who yeah. was, were you managing that? Or who was working with the inspectors? Uh, oh, GC? My, my husband. And yeah, your husband? And general contractor, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, so. He's, Brutal. Yeah, but he's, he remains calm and cool. Yeah. And I'm the one running around, you know, having a heart attack. That's a good balance. Yeah. And are you guys cooking while this is happening? While the inspectors are there? Or are you kind of like put yeah. everything down? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We, I mean, we had, um, you know, we had rebuilt, we, we built a brand new uh, walk-in and we had rebuilt all the, you know, equipment that was in there. So we had new compressors and new swamp coolers and everything. But did you get like a free rent period because of this investment? Did. Okay, yeah. yeah. I was going to say, because yeah. if you're improving the value of the building that significantly. Yeah, yeah we did. Um, and and it, it worked to our advantage, you know, because we had exactly the kitchen we wanted yeah. and the office space. And, um, you know, we didn't, it wasn't like a turnkey thing. We could really customize it. Make it, it your own. Yeah. yeah. What is your most memorable catering event since you started the company with your husband? Or maybe like top two. I'm sure you've done some amazing ones. We've done some really cool ones. But probably my favorite was the Breaking Bad finale. Diego mentioned that, that you yeah. did that. Yeah. I don't know if you saw the show. Oh, you watched my, it's yeah, my, every single episode. I'm not a, we don't have a television, as you may have seen. But Breaking Bad uh, goes down as like my favorite television yeah. show. I read Brian of, Cranston's of all book time. that he wrote. He yeah, what was the event from like? So, Italy, you know? so, what, so it was like the event in LA. Was there a theme? Yeah, it was Breaking Bad, and um, Aaron Paul drove the Winnebago. To Stop. 
Yeah, it was at Hollywood Forever, the graveyard. Oh my gosh. And he perfect. drove it to the graveyard, and then they had a screening of the final episode, and then we had 900 people uh, in the Masonic Lodge, and like, beautiful, Love was beautiful. The DJ. Oh my god, what an and event! Like, what did you serve? So, how did you serve meth? No. <laughs> we did. We took isomalt, which is like a, a kind of stable sugar sort of glass. And we, we made tons and tons of sheets of it in blue. And oh, so wow. we had like racks and racks of the blue crystal math. And yeah. then we had those uh, tiles that are on the elements chart. Mm -hmm. The periodic table. table. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so we had the periodic That's uh, so creative. table, like cookies, and it was sitting on a pile of the crystal meth. <laughs> and then, like, our waiters were all awesome. dressed, like, either El Pollo Loco, or no, not El Pollo, what was it? Um, yeah, yeah, that was it, the Pollo Loco, yeah. No, 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 no that's, that's oh, the chicken place. Los, los Pollo Hermanos? Yeah, yeah so that's, that's it. Pollo that's it. Hermanos employees. So they all had those uniforms with, like, the red visors. And oh, then wow. we had, rather than having girls serving cocktails, we had um, some of our guys and they were wearing tidy whities and a green shirt. No way. And like brown socks. And, <laughs> and they were the cocktail servers. That's and I just remember when he came. Yeah, yeah, the yeah, yeah. After. And then we had a pizza from the show that landed on the roof, Venezios. We, we had like pizza boxes made that we were serving that, you know, Venezios pizza, which, you know, we made ourselves. Yeah. And we wow. had all of our other trays for the servers had bells on it, like, mm. um, Tito, wow. what was his name, Tito? Yeah, you guys wanted to detail with this. Like, yeah, How did we, you... were, we were like super fans, yeah. we were really excited. So this is just you and your team thinking of this whole yeah. thing? That's yeah, that's awesome. Man. That's amazing. Yeah. And then the marketing um, and the, the designer that we worked with, uh, Lacey Maxwell, she's from the Bay Area, um, everything we threw at her, she's like, Yes, yes. Amazing. Yes. And she she loved the show too. And um, everything was edible. It yeah, so like. all of the bars were um, labs and there were beakers and, and she she designed these amazing bars with you know uh, like bubbling beakers and steaming things behind our bartenders. And then we had a crystal meth lab set up. <laughs> And we had pastry so chefs wearing like respirators oh, and goodness. hazmat suits, and we were making liquid nitrogen ice cream. Wow! And yeah, so it was really fun. It do you, so do you have pictures fun. of this on your website? Or oh, I think event? so. Okay, yeah. that's amazing. That's amazing. But that, I mean, that was several years ago. But that was like super fun because we were yeah. such fans. Yeah. Know? And then you did the James Beard. We've been invited you've done to the James Beard House twice now uh, since we've been open, and we've hosted two dinners there in New York City. What is that like? Um, Whole different crowd, right? Do you feel yeah. pressured because yeah. these are such foodies at the top? Yeah, it's yeah, and it's it's a like an honor to be yeah. invited there. Absolutely. You know? um, so yeah, you know, we we were like, oh, we gotta turn this out. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> being filmed and um, the first time we went uh, it was being filmed for an ABC show called like cooking at the James Beard house or something and so they did all this footage of us in LA and then they followed us to the James cool. Beard house and you know so on top of just like the regular pressure of it we were body yeah. mic'd right like, so that was a little much. Yeah. Um, you're trying to focus on what you're doing and putting pulling this off. And yeah. Then also... and trying not to swear. Yeah. <laughs> oh, right. right. Yeah. That's a huge honor. Kind yeah. Of thing. And, yeah. And Is it like a five course meal? What's the. Yeah. Okay. Um, Sit down. Five or six. And there's hors d'oeuvres. So people come in and okay. there's hors d'oeuvres. And, um, you know, we really like to highlight um, winemakers that we're friends with here. Oh, cool. Um, so we had several Central Coast winemakers. And that's why we wanted to work with Border X yeah. to, to serve the uh, stout. The stout mm -hmm. with the pretzel. Yeah. The pretzel on yeah. top, right? Our, it was like yeah. a. Yeah. Yeah, we need to make that happen again. That was yeah, really sure. Good. So the way I met <laughs> Kathleen was. Um, um, border, you, you obviously we were talking about Border X, and then they have an Abuelitas chocolate, which is like a chocolate stout they use or they make using uh, Mexican chocolate. Mm. And you, 
I don't know how you guys got in touch to, with them, but basically you wanted to to pair it with the dessert that you were serving at the yeah. this dinner. And um, David. yeah, how did you find David, and how did you find Porter X? Um, I I knew I wanted to use a stout, and then when I started reading about Porter X and like what their whole statement was and who they were as a company, and you know my my political feelings got the best of me, and I was like, of course, I want to highlight yeah. a you know Mexican American amazing company mm -hmm. and support them, and hopefully bring some some spotlight or attention That's to great. their brand. So often, like we work with like a lot of female winemakers too, for the same reason, because it's to me, I I want people to know that there are some tremendous women in this industry that are doing some cool things. I think half of our guests have been female and also their, their husband or boyfriend um, oh, yeah. are involved in the business somehow. But not, as, but not in like the same way, you yeah. know, in like more of a support role. Yeah. Oh, it's interesting. I mean, Charlie, Charlie is a huge part of our success. We would not be in business without him. You know, like he is That's the... Awesome. He has the vision, he has the kind of um, business acumen and, and prowess to, to make sure that, you know, the lights are still on and that we're maintaining our costs. And, um, you know, he conducts all of the kind of operations of the business. That's and super cool. That. Yeah, which is great. It's a good combination, yin and yang. Yeah. yeah. Did you feel like it from the beginning starting to work together did you feel like it just came naturally or was there a patch where you had to learn about each other we <laughs> so. had some fights you yep know? yeah no, it's <laughs> commonplace but we we sought professional help you should do that <laughs> you should do that <laughs> <laughs> you should do that well like the the negotiation was always like we would bring all of the stress and and problems from work home oh us. for sure right mm -hmm. and you know and we couldn't stop talking about it Mm -hmm. And despite being told, like, don't, don't bring work home with yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so in an effort to, like, preserve our um, business partnership and our marriage, like, we sought help. Mm -hmm. And we learned that the most important thing was to negotiate what your roles are. And they, should, they shouldn't overlap. Mm -hmm. You know, stay in your lane. Like, do work to your strengths and rely on your partner to handle the other parts of the business that you're you know, not. Absolutely. Or in general. I mean, even if you have business yeah. partners, same yeah. thing. Know what you're good at. Do that. Yeah. Hire mm -hmm. the experts. And just let them do their thing. And did you suggest that or did he suggest that? And was there a conversation or were you both just like, yes, we need to do this? Yeah, we would probably fight over who <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. But, That's you outstanding. Know, it, it's, you know, we both kind of came to that conclusion because we had a massive argument. We were we were traveling um, and doing uh, an event in Chicago, actually, and we had this argument, and it was not going to be resolved. Yeah. You know? So we were mad at each other on the flight home, <laughs> and then the next day, and then we both decided, you know, we should probably talk to somebody. And would you recommend that for couples that work together? That one hundred percent. Yeah. Cool. Yes. Because now, you know, we we know what our parts are in the business and, and, you know, what we're responsible for. And we don't let any of our staff come to me with any kind of HR or operations mm -hmm. questions. So you've yeah. delineated that. Yeah, I direct mm -hmm. them to Charlie and Charlie, anything um, creative, anything related to food or culinary come to me. I, I highly recommend yes. counseling. Now so that's what's, great. What's next for Schaefer's? What does um, the, the future hold? What are the secrets <laughs> you can tell us? Uh, well, we're working on a few things. Um, a line of products. Um, okay, for the hot, okay. Something we're interested in. As shown here, perhaps? Yeah, this is, um, this an, is olive an olive oil. oil that we've had for several years now. Um, it's not for sale. We, we give it as gifts, um, but it's organic. It's produced in Santa Barbara County. Hmm. Los Olivos? Uh, <laughs> uh, actually, Santa Inez. Cool. Yeah. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. Oh. And uh, they have a solar-powered mill that presses the olives, which wow. is cool. Thoughtful. They are huge proponents of sustainability, um, and, and that's important to us. And then the salt is a solar-evaporated Pacific Sea salt that we like. So Amazing. Again, another California product. 
beyond that, you know, we, we have several other irons in the fire. Of course, we're always looking at real estate. Venues are, are somewhat interesting to us. Like it's, an event center and a kitchen type of yeah, venue? Yeah, okay. yeah. I'm not going to divulge, but I, I think when people build <laughs> out huge commercial kitchens, like for an event space, it's a waste of money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But that's my personal opinion. Yeah. I think mm -hmm. it's like, don't, don't spend money on that. Yeah. You know? I agree. Having built one, it's extremely, <laughs> extremely expensive for, I don't know. I don't know what the gains are. I don't know what, what that looks like financially, but it's years in planning so and long term. Yeah. yeah. And, and, um, you know, by the time you're able to see any return on that investment, you know, the, the equipment and everything's obsolete mm -hmm. right? and you're paying, um, on that equipment. Yeah. Now you're, you're paying, um, taxes on, mm -hmm. on that equipment. It's depreciating. And, yeah. And it's just like, it is not a wise decision. And people have asked us, Oh yeah, we want to have an event space, and we're we're going to build a kitchen. We always say, don't do yeah. it, you know. And, yeah. And they keep doing it. So, so bizarre. It's bad math, is what I've narrowed it down to. Yes. People just, um, I mean, I've seen a lot of these models. Some developers show me, and it's like the most hopeful model. It might as well be an Excel sheet of them hitting the lottery type of <laughs> delusion. Yeah. But yeah. because it's in Excel, they think it's true. Yeah. And it's just like, then I'm the guy who has to tell them this is really hopeful. Yeah, and, it's just a and, and I don't yeah. know if they're hosting like Sting and they're selling tickets every night to this event center because that's the only way this will work. Yeah. Right. Or like right. they're bringing somebody back from the dead and they're going to perform. Well, it just doesn't make sense because there's been so many advancements in mobile, you know, mobile catering systems. And, you know, right. you, like a lot of times you probably just need like a, a couple outlets, right? Yeah, um, you know, d depending on, on what we're doing, you know, if we're doing a 900 person or 1200 person event, you know, we need, we need some space. Yeah. Uh, but we own so much of our own equipment. It doesn't like, why would you right. pay to supply equipment? Plus there's rental companies. Yep. So anything you don't own, you can rent. And that cost is passed along to the person hosting the event. For sure. Mm. So, it makes like, more sense that way. Why would you take on that as the yeah. cost? Where can mm -hmm. people find you? Tell everybody where they can find you and your company. We are at shaferla.com, S-C-H-A-F-F-E-R-L-A.com. And uh, we're located in Mid-City in Los Angeles. And you can find us on social media <laughs> <laughs> at Schaefer underscore LA. Well, Kathleen, thanks for coming on the show. Thank you Super. For thanks me. for sharing your story. I know, I talk a lot. Oh, it's great. We have Such a counseling a session story. in the plan. So. <laughs> yeah, edit, edit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, thank you. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you so much. Great to have you. Oh. We here at Start of the Storefront would love to hear feedback from you. Reach out and let us know what you think about the show. Make sure to give us a rating on iTunes. Anything over five stars is the only way to go. Our music is composed by Double Touch. You can find us on Facebook and Instagram at Start of the Storefront. For more information on the products and businesses featured on the show, check out the links in the show notes. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss a single episode. Thanks for listening and we'll see you next time.